and then okay uh the today's speaker is tiago castillo de malo from uh, brazil and the topic of today's talk is images of multilinear polynomials on upper triangular matrices uh tiago you're welcome to start yep. thank you very much uh so i'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to speak here also for professor Drensky who invited me uh, so this uh, subject I've been studying some some for, for some years, and I re I'm really enjoying this this kind of problems related to this, and so it's uh, I really like to talk about this. <laughs> so the topic is image of of polynomials on algebra. Uh, actually, I'm going to talk more about image of multilinear polynomials because it's where the the most interesting problems are in my opinion. And uh, I will give a brief survey of, on the, the conjectures and main results, which are known. And in the end of the talk, I will talk about the image of polynomials on the algebra of upper triangular matrices, which is a result with my colleague, uh, Ivan Gonzalez. Uh, well, yeah, that, that's it. Uh, can you see what I write here? Just to know. Yes, we see, yes. Okay. Okay, so to, to motivate this, this subject, I will start with a simple exercise I like to give for my linear algebra students, first year linear algebra students, that the trace of a commutator of two matrices equals, or the, the trace of AB equals to the trace of BA. It's a simple exercise. And, but the interesting thing here is that there is a converse of this fact, that if you consider a matrix with trace zero, then we can prove that there are A and B such that M is the commutator of A and B. So I'm using this symbol as the commutator, okay? X, Y minus Y, X. I believe everyone is used to this symbol. Uh, so this, this is a, an old result from uh, Schauder first proved it for the case of characteristic zero, around 36, I'm not wrong. And now Bertrand and Mooken helped prove this in the 50s of the last century. So it's an old result. I can give you the idea of uh, the idea of how uh, the idea of how this is true, not the proof, but the idea. We can uh, verify that if your matrix N, which has trace zero, is equivalent, is conjugated to a matrix. Let's And this matrix N is a commutator, so M will be a commutator too, because you can write this P minus M, let's say A, B, P, and this will be equal to P minus M, A, P, P minus M, B, P, okay? So we can prove this for uh, a conjugate to, to M, and this will be true for M also. So, if uh, the trace of the matrix is zero, it's not a scalar matrix. It's not a scalar matrix. Matrix. If it's not the, the zero matrix, right? So, if it's not a scalar matrix, there is a result of uh, Amitsu and Rowan that says that your matrix M is equivalent. Uh, sorry, is equivalent as conjugated to a matrix which has zero in all diagonal except for the last one. I'm considering just that I can put a zero in the first position here. It will be a matrix like this, okay? And then you can prove that if this is a commutator, this will also be a commutator. Okay, so with an induction step here, you prove that this holds for any matrix with trace zero. Okay, this is the idea behind this, this fact. Uh, but we can, we can read this in another, in another language. This is saying that this map here, which takes a pair of matrices and takes it to its commutator, is rejected. So this, we can see that the, the map defined by a polynomial, which is this polynomial here, the commutator. So this polynomial defines a map, which is rejected. So we can ask about this problem for other polynomials. And that's how we do this. We consider a polynomial in M variables, it defines in a natural way a map, which we are going to call 
F2. That's the polynomial map defined by F. That's the valuation of variables by elements of here. Okay. Actually, we are doing this for matrices, but if you consider any algebra A, in this case, associative algebra, we can also do this uh, for the algebra. And let's use R because A are the matrices. So we have a map from Rm to R. Okay. And the question, the important question here is uh, attributed to Kaplansky is that which subsets of K by K matrices are image of some polynomial, okay? This, uh, this is attributed to Kaplansky, but you can find this written in any paper or anywhere else. So it's, it's mentioned in the paper that someone's told that it was a problem of Kaplansky. So it's known as Kaplansky question now. Uh, let's see some examples here. So if you consider this polynomial, which is just considering the first variable, x1, of course, the image of this polynomial is the whole matrix algebra. You can substitute anything here and you get any matrix, okay? So this is a possible, a possible image of a polynomial. Another example here, if you consider the polynomial, the standard polynomial of the degree 2k, which is this polynomial here, then uh, its image is zero. It's uh, the well-known theorem of Amitri Levitsky. Actually, for any identity you consider, the image will be zero, right? You can say that uh, a polynomial is a polynomial identity if the image, as I defined above, is zero. Another example I have just mentioned, the commutator. The image is the set of three zero matrices, which I'm denoting by SLK. And we can also consider this simple example here on two by two matrices. We know that this is uh, uh, the circle problem. The circle product here means Okay, uh, this is a central polynomial. So uh, the image of this polynomial is the set of scalar matrices. So we are identifying the scalar matrices with the field. Okay, so we have these four possibilities here, uh, in these examples of image of polynomials. Actually here, I'm working with two by two matrices, but we know that there are central polynomials for, for matrices of any order. This is the result of, these are results of uh, for Manek and Razmizov. Answering a question of Kaplansky too. So it's a, it's a question that in the, in the same, let's say, near to this question. Okay. Uh, what can we say about the image of a polynomial, the structure of this, of this set? Okay. This is what we're going to discuss now. First, we have this proposition that says that the image is invariant under conjugation by invertible matrices. So, if you consider a polynomial, when we evaluate this on some matrices, it will be a uh, sum of monomials evaluated on these matrices, let's say something like this. When you conjugate this by a matrix P, it's the same as conjugating this, and this is the, the same as conjugating each one of these uh, factors. Okay, so this will be just F evaluated in Okay, so we st you are still in the image of the polynomial F. Okay, actually, uh, we are using conjugation, but you can prove the same by, uh, you, prove, you can prove the same using an isomorphism of, the, of your algebra. So F is invariant under uh, sorry, automorphisms of the algebra of n by n matrices. Actually, it's the same in this case, but if you consider an algebra, a general algebra, you, you can consider more than just conjugation and you can consider any automorphism, okay? Uh, another proposition here is that the image is closed under scalar multiplication. Actually, you don't need to have a multilinear polynomial key here. You just need to have a, polynomial which is linear in one variable, it's enough, okay? So using these two, two ideas here, you can define what we call a invariant cone. Invariant cone, let's see, invariant cone. 
Con because it's uh, closed under multiplication, invariant because it's invariant under conjugation. So this is a uh, this define a, a partition of your of your set of matrices, and you can take a representative of each of these partitions, okay, and check if the if it is in the image of your polynomial. F. So you can reduce this to a finite number of of classes of matrices in order to, to handle with this problem, okay? Uh, and here you can ask too if the sum of two matrices in the image still is a matrix in the image. And the answer is usually not. And that's the question for K by K matrices. That's really uh, the, the hard part because scalar multiplication is okay, but what Vov is asking here is if F is a multilinear polynomial, is the image a vector space on K by K matrices? So the problem here is the sum. The, the scalar multiplication is not a problem. Uh, so it seems a naive question, but it's really hard to solve this problem. We only know a complete solution for K equals two or, or for polynomials of degree two. Uh, let's compare these two problems here, the, the question of Lvov and the question of Kaplinsky. Kaplansky is, is a more general, but Lvov is asking if the image is a vector space for the case of multilinear polynomials. So let's assume, uh, first we, we consider this proposition that says that the linear span of the image of a polynomial is a Lie ideal, okay? This is not difficult to prove. Uh, you just need to, Lie ideal, I mean, it's closed under commutators, okay? So if you consider, that's right, right here. We just need to show that this is a, this is a, in the image, okay? Actually, this is in the span of the image. And we can prove that this is equal to, this, so each one of these is in the image, so, it's in the linear span of the image, okay? That's the idea of proving this. And there is a classification of Lie ideals of K by K matrices when we're, we're working with an infinite field. And these are the only possibilities. K by K matrices, trace zero matrices, the field here representing the scalar matrices and zero. These are the only Lie ideals on K by K matrices. So you can compare these possibilities here with the examples I have given. They are exactly the same, okay? So under this, uh, because of this fact, the, the linear span of the image of a polynomial is one of these possibilities here we have mentioned. So what is now called the Lvov Kaplansky conjecture is that, okay, if this is a, a vector space, the linear span of it is itself. So the conjecture says that if F is a polynomial, multilinear, okay, then its image is one of these four possibilities. Okay. I like to stress out here that these are too big and these are too small. This has dimension, uh, let's say, K square. This is K square minus one. This has dimension one and this has dimension zero. Okay, so these are the possibilities here are too big or too small. And we are going to see that in some generalizations of this problem, this still holds. Okay, um, let's see an example in, in where if you consider non-multilinear polynomials, the, the linear span is not a, a vector space. So we are considering K by K matrices and this polynomial here in one variable, okay? So of course we have this, uh, this EIJ, I mean matrix units, okay? It has one in position IJ and zero, zero in the remaining positions. So F evaluated on this equals itself. So this lies in the image. Also, if you consider I different from J, the image of when you put this in the K power, we still have this, okay? Uh, because this is new potent and the product of this is equal to this. And so 
every matrix unit of this type lies in, in the image and also this. So the difference of them equals to this. So this lies in the linear span of the image of the polynomial, of this polynomial F we are considering. So we have all of these for all i and j in the image. So the linear span is the whole algebra. Okay. So let's see if so if if the, the image would be a subspace, it would be equal to this one. So we are now going to prove that this cannot be in the image. So assume it is in the image for some i different from j. Then it there will be a matrix A such that A to the K equals this matrix. So we have this equation. But this one is uh, nilpotent. So A is nilpotent too. But A is a K by K matrix and the nilpotent index is bounded by K. So A to the K must be zero. But A to the K is this. So this would be zero and this is a contradiction, okay? So the image of the polynomial cannot be a vector subspace of K by K matrix, this polynomial, right? So when you're considering non-multilinear polynomials, there is a problem. Okay, uh, let's say about let's say something about uh, non results of this problem. So the the most decisive result in this direction is this one from 2012, kind of Bell of Malov and Rowan. And Malov in 2014, we generalized this for the real numbers. Here they proved for quadratic closed fields that the image is one of that four possibilities. So they proved the conjecture for n equals two. Malev also worked with uh, arbitrary fields, but here he only was able to prove this, that the image contain, contains all trace zero matrices, okay? But he cannot prove that these are the only possibilities. Okay, let's see some other results. Here for three by three matrices, the same authors have an interesting result, but not complete result. They prove that the possible uh, images are these ones. So here are the ones we have already considered. Huh? This is for uh, polynomial identities. This is for central polynomials. And the other possibilities they list are a dense subset of three zero matrices, a dense subset of three by three matrices. Dense here means in the Zariski topology, right? Also, there are other two possibilities here. The set of three scalar matrices, which are matrices with uh, eigenvalues A, epsilon A, epsilon square A, where epsilon is a cube root of, of one. Okay. And the set of three scalar plus scalar matrices. This is a finite number of possibilities here, but the, the ones which are not subspaces have not been shown to be the image of any multilinear polynomial. So the problem, the complete problem for two by two matrices is still, is still open, okay? But it's a very interesting result. Uh, also, we have a solution for the case of infinite matrices. Let's say what we're presenting infinite matrices are the, the algebra of endomorphisms of uh, infinite dimensional, countable dimensional vector space. And Vitas proved that in this case, the image is always uh, the whole algebra. It's, it's surjective. Actually, his result is more general, not only for this algebra, but also for any algebra, any unitary algebra, which contains a surjective inner derivation. And he proved that the same holds, okay? For instance, here, you can consider also the Vio algebras by considering this in this case. Okay. Also for polynomials of degree three. So before we are we were fixing the, the size of the matrix, right? Here for two by three matrices, here for two by two matrices. And now we are fixing the number of variables. So for three variables, the and clap proved that it's true for uh, matrices of even order and matrices of small odd order. Okay. The case of uh, two by two, sorry, the case of polynomials of degree two, 
is the, the first one, because if a polynomial has degree two, and it's multilinear, it's, it's of this type. If alpha equals to minus one, you have the commutator, and this is the result of Schauber, Albert, and Mukenhaupt. And if alpha is not minus one, it's easy to see that this is the image of this polynomial is the whole algebra. Okay, so the case two was very simple, and the case three has this partial result here. Uh, there is a weaker version of this involved Kaplansky conjecture that is called the Messiaen conjecture, and this says that this is based on this proposition that says that if a polynomial of degree m is evaluated on n by n matrices, here m and here n, and m and n are uh, related by this inequality here, then the linear span of the image of f contains all trace zero matrices, okay? Uh, this is a generalization of, this is a, weak, a weaker version of the Wolf Kaplan's conjecture, because if the Wolf Kaplan's conjecture is true, uh, then the image is uh, zero, the field, trace zero matrices, or the whole algebra. So with this equation here, we have that M is uh, smaller than 2N minus one. So it cannot be an identity and it cannot be a central polynomial. So it only can be SLN or the whole algebra MN. So it contains the, the three zero matrices. So here, but here we are uh, talking about the linear span of the image. But the conjecture now is that this hold not for linear span, but for the image itself. Okay. And this has solutions for, uh, of course, since this is a weaker version of Wolf Kaplan's conjecture, a counterexample of this would be a counterexample for the Wolf Kaplan's conjecture, too. Okay. And this has solutions only for M up to four. And also for finitary matrices. That same author, Vitas, proved that for this hold for finitary matrices. By finitary matrices here, I mean matrices with infinite size, but uh, only finite number of non-zero entries, entries in each element. Okay. And this is, there, are, there is this interesting result of Brescia that if F is not, uh, sorry, if F is a polynomial, these two statements are equivalent. F is not a central polynomial, not an identity for any homomorphic image of A, and the linear span of the image of F contains all commutators, okay? And as a consequence of this, you can prove that the A equals the ideal generated by commutators. Uh, actually, we, using this result, we can prove this proposition as a corollary. Okay. Okay, so these are the, the main results known for uh, n by n matrices, which is the main problem in this, in this kind of study. But there are some variations of this conjecture that I'd like to mention now. So the problem is, consider an associative algebra or a Lie algebra, Jordan algebra, or an algebra in your favorite variety, and consider a polynomial, which now will be a, an element of the free algebra of your variety, the free Lie algebra, the free Jordan algebra, and so on. And you can ask if the image of this polynomial is a vector space in your algebra, okay? So many, many results uh, studying this kind of problem have been made in the last years. I will mention some of them here, okay? So let's start with this for Lie algebras. And the same authors of I mentioned before, Canobel of Malik and Rowan, proved that if the field has characteristic not two, the image of a Lie polynomial evaluated on two by two traces with matrices is either this or zero, okay? So, or it, it's an identity or it's subjective. Also, uh, Spenko in 2000, 2012 worked with K by K traces matrices and Emrich and Valdivetti in 2015 worked with SUK and SOK. And they proved that for polynomials of degree up to four, Lie polynomials of degree up to four, 
these damages are a vector subspace. Okay. And also for the Jordan algebra of symmetric matrices, it was proved that it's a vector space when evaluated in degree three multilinear polynomials. And this, in, this curious algebra here is the rock, paper, scissors algebra, the one which has the table multiplication given by this rock, paper, scissors game. And they proved that this is a vector space too. Okay. This, I'd like to, to mention something about these algebras. This is a simple algebra. These are simple algebras. This is, a, this is a simple algebra. This, this is not a simple algebra. And before that, the ones we have considered before, K by K matrix is also a simple algebra. So uh, it seems that we have some positive results on simple algebras. And it's, it's interesting to, to understand how things go in this kind of simple and finite dimensional action. Okay. Uh, okay, more results in this direction or non-matrix algebras, for the algebra of quaternions, as considered as an algebra of the real numbers. Uh, Mahler's proved that the possible images of, of this, of a multilinear polynomial are zero, when you're considering a polynomial identity, R, here you're considering a central polynomial, the set of vector quaternions, here I mean, Quaternions are spanned by one, i, j, k, right? And v is the span by i, j, and k. These are the vector quaternions, okay? The quaternions with uh, the real part equals to zero, okay? So these are the whole algebra. And again, uh, Malev with other collaborators, Bellow, Cabello, Pines, and Rowan, he proved the same result for the algebra of octonions. It's the non associative algebra of dimension eight. It's something similar to this, but instead of i, j, k, I will have seven uh, imaginary units here. Okay, And he proved that the image of a multilinear polynomial is zero. The field viewed as the, the set of uh, as here, the, the, the real part, okay, as the part of with coefficients here are equal to zero. Or the, the algebra B, which is generated by the seven uh, imaginary units, or the whole algebra of octonics, okay? So this result, and one more result in this direction is for Jordan algebras, which they call JN here. Again, Malev with Yavich and Shire. They proved that, let's see who is this algebra JN here. It's a Jordan algebra with basis one and other n minus one vectors here. And the table of multiplication, of, the, of course, one is the identity. And these guys here satisfies this condition, okay? Actually, this can be seen as the, the Jordan algebra this is a particular case of a Jordan algebra of a non-degenerate bilinear form. And you know, this algebra is simple too. So they prove that the image of a polynomial on this algebra is either zero, R here, again, considered as the linear span of this guy here, or V, which is the linear span of these guys here, or the whole algebra, okay? Okay, so again, I, I'd like to compare these results because all of, all of them have this, or two small possibilities or too big. Oh, so this has dimension zero, his dimension one. This has co-dimension one, co-dimension zero. Or it, it's either too big or too small. So it may be something more general that we still cannot be, cannot understand what's happening, but it's a lot of examples where this is this is working. Okay, so here, here also we have dimension n, n minus one, one or zero. The same here for quaternions, the same for matrices. Okay, so it's interesting to understand what's going on here in a more general case, but it seems to be a difficult problem. Okay. Uh, so I, I call this generalized Lobkapan's conjecture. 
then you consider V a variety of F algebras, F a polynomial in, your, in the free algebra of your variety. If A is a finite dimensional simple algebra in your variety, is the image of A a vector space? So this would be interesting to know. And the examples we have seen here are always positive. Okay. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to talk about another variation of this conjecture. That's for the algebra of upper triangular matrices. This is where I, I, I work and have some results I'd like to talk to you. So this was the, the this work was started with my uh, master degree student of mine, Fagundes. In his master degree dissertation, he proved that for polynomials of degree up to four, the image of a multilinear polynomial on upper triangular matrices, upper triangular matrices, I believe everyone here knows, right? Matrices with zero below the mean diagonal. And he proved that the image of F on UTK is the whole algebra, J. Here, J means the Jacobson radical of this, the Jacobson radical of this equal. The strictly upper triangular matrices. Okay. Or the square of the Jacobson radical, which would be another diagonal of zeros here. Okay, he proved this for uh, polynomials of degree for up to four. And we proved that the linear span of the image of a polynomial, a multilinear polynomial here, now the linear span, okay, the linear span here is the whole algebra or some power of the Jacobson radical. And we have conjecture that this holds for not only the linear span, but also for the, the image of the polynomial. Uh, that what we have proved for polynomials of degree up to four, okay? Fagundes also have uh, studied uh, strictly upper triangular matrices. And he proved in this case that the image of a polynomial, a multilinear polynomial of degree M on strictly upper triangular matrices is exactly J to the M, okay? Here we have an additional uh, difficult difficulty because this algebra has not unity. So some tools we use in unitary algebras doesn't work here, but he, he was able to, to, to get a complete result in this case. Okay, so now I'm going to discuss a little about uh, the solution for the, the, the problem of image of polynomials on the full, uh, full no, not full, sorry, on the upper triangular matrices, not the strictly upper, but the upper triangular matrices, okay? And this is a result with Ivan Gonzalez Delgado from Brazil. So uh, in order to, to, to study this problem, we, we recall that the T ideal of identities of UTN equals the T ideal generated by a product of uh, N commutators. It's the T ideal generated by this. Okay, so any identity of upper triangular matrices lies in this T ideal. And then we can consider this set of descending chain of this descending chain of T ideals of Fx. That's the whole algebra, the T ideal generated by one commutator, the T ideal generated by a product of two commutators, three commutators, and so on. And if you consider a polynomial F here, of course, it will be in some of these. And for some R, it will be this, and it will not be in the next one, okay? So this R will be called the commutator degree of this polynomial F. So uh, by, from what we have mentioned here, né, that this is the identities of the triangular matrices, we can say that we say that F has commutator degree R, if and only if it's, it is an identity of R by R upper triangular matrices, and it is not an identity for upper triangular matrices of order R plus one, okay? And the idea here is to characterize the, the multilinear polynomials with commutator degree R in terms of its coefficients in order to solve the problem of images of upper triangular matrices, okay? So 
how can we work with this? So any polynomial which is multilinear can be written in this way here. So it's a monomial yeah, with a coefficient here. These monomials are indexed by uh, permutations of the symmetric group and, and, and letters here. Okay? Any multilinear polynomial can be written this way. So we started this simple fact here, this lemma, that shows that if the sum of these coefficients is not zero, then the image of f on any unitary algebra is equal to the whole algebra. It's surjective. Okay? How can we prove that? We can just do this. You evaluate each x i by one by the identity matrix up to n minus one, and the matrix m you will be will be evaluated by one over this times a. So when we evaluate everyone like this, it will only remain this one, this a, and this coefficient will factor out here and cancel with this, you get a, okay? After these evaluations, f will be a, okay? So a was arbitrary, so the image is the whole algebra. Actually, a is not a good letter here, let's say m, okay? because A is the algebra. <laughs> uh, okay, so if, if the sum of coefficients is different from zero, the image is the whole algebra. But when the sum of the coefficients is not different from zero, or, or I mean, it's equal to zero, you can prove that this is equivalent to F being a polynomial in this TID. Okay, so this, this, Thing here characterizes polynomials which are here and are not here. Okay, uh, uh, sorry, which are here and are not here. If if this is different from zero, it's not here. If it's equal to zero, it, it, it's here. Okay. Okay, so this characterizes the multilinear polynomials with commutator degree zero. Commutator degree zero means that it's here and it's not here. Ah, sorry, the contrary, it's here and it's not here. Okay. The question is, can we do the same for R? Can we find a characterization in terms of its coefficients such that uh, it lies here and it's not, it's not, it is here and it's not in the next one? Or R. And the answer for this is yes. And to that, we need to introduce some special kinds of permutations here. This is a little bit technical, but I, I believe I can explain this in such a way it's not too technical. <laughs> so, what are we going to do? We are going to partitionate our set of n variables here in something like this. So, we have k elements here which are ordered, and k subsets here, okay? What we are going to do, we are going to do this. Here will be, um, the size of this guy here is uh, h1 minus one. The size of this is hk minus one. So uh, here we have h1 minus one elements, and here we have the element h1. Here we have H2 minus one element. We have the element here, H1 plus H2, and so on, okay? And I'm considering this set of permutations of these M letters here, which do the following. Send the first H minus one elements, which are here, to this first, this first set of my partition T1. This H1 will be sent to this first T1 here. These guys here will be sent to this capital T2, which is the second element in this partition, and so on. These will be sent to T2 and so on. Okay? And I'm considering the set of permutations of these letters, which satisfy this, satisfies this property, I mean, I'm mentioning here, I will denote by S, K, capital T, small t. Okay, this k is the number of 
elements here in the number of subsets here. Okay. And this T, the union, let's say, the set of these guys here, and this T is the set of this pattern. Okay, just to be, to not write all of this to be, to be. Okay, so it depends on the K, the number of parts here, and the on this the choice of these elements and these subsets. Okay, and they must satisfy this property, which is the this I have mentioned before. So I will consider this, the, this coefficient here, which is the sum of all coefficients of the polynomial, which are indexed by partitions, which are in this set I have just defined here. Okay, so this will be the beta k capital T small t. And the interesting thing here is that we can prove that if f is a multilinear polynomial with coefficients alpha, then these are the, the these are equivalent. The polynomial has commutator degree r, if and only if for all indexes k smaller than r, any choice of any partition I choose will give me this equal to zero. And there is some partition when you consider exactly r, there is some partition which the coefficient is non zero. Okay, so this theorem says that we can characterize polynomials of computer degree r in terms of its coefficients. Okay. Uh, okay. And how this will be useful to, to solve our problem? So there is this lemma that proves that if you consider a polynomial, a Mutilian polynomial, if this is zero for all k smaller than n, and any choice of partitions, then F is an identity for n by n matrices. So this n here is the same of this, and this must be zero for all k smaller than n. If this holds for any choice of partitions, this will be an identity. And we, need, we still need to know when it's not an identity. So that's the other lemma. If you consider this polynomial with coefficients alpha, then if there is a partition such that this is non-zero for the same n we are considering here, then f is not, not an identity for upper triangular matrices of order n plus one. Okay, so these are the main, some of the main steps in solving our problem. And then we have this theorem that says that, actually this is a, a compilation of the, the previous results that a polynomial has commutator degree r, if and only if it's an identity of this and it's not an identity of this, if and only if uh, for any k smaller than r and for any choice of partitions, the coefficient beta will be zero. And for k equals r, actually for r, there is a partition which is non-zero. It's just putting the, the, the previous lemmas together here, okay? And with this, we were able to prove the uh, main theorem of our, our paper, which is that this paper is accepted for publication in Israel Journal of Mathematics and is available on archive. But we were able to prove that the image of F, which has commutator degree R, is exactly J to the R, okay? So uh, how can we prove this, right? Because I don't give you any idea just writing this, but the idea is the following. Let's see before here. We have these partitions here, and if it has commutator degree R, there is some choice of partitions here for K equals R, in which the coefficient we defined here is non-zero, okay? So here we do the following substitution, and we write like down. We evaluate the variables X, Y, X, I to a diagonal matrix, a specific diagonal matrix, if y i uh, belongs to t i, so the elements which are in the sets, in these sets here, will be evaluated to diagonal matrices. Okay, why is that? Because here it doesn't matter the order of them here, and diagonal matrices commute, so 
that's what's behind of this, this idea. So this just for the elements of this part of the partition. So if it's of the form uh, Ti for some i, then we will evaluate this on this element n here, which is this matrix here, which has no zero entries only in this diagonal above the main diagonal. This for i up to uh, R minus one. And the last matrix will be evaluated to a matrix, an arbitrary matrix, an upper triangular matrix. And with this kind of substitution, we are able to, to, to solve uh, a system of equations which appear when you, 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 you consider an arbitrary matrix here. Okay. And some part of this, we use the fact that the field must be infinite because we have a commutative polynomial non-zero and we must guarantee that it has a non-zero evaluation, okay? And so because of this, we, the, our result holds only for polynomials of over infinite fields. So this must be infinite. I forgot about writing it here. And uh, I need to remark here that uh, this result was proved independently by Wang and Wu. It's published the, this year in Journal of Algebra. And they, they, their result also holds for polynomials of uh, uh, over finite fields, but with uh, fields big enough, okay? There is a, some, some size of the field, okay? Um, actually, they still, they also use these ideas these coefficients here, they also use, but their proof is different from ours. Okay, uh, what else can I say about this? Ah, we have defined here the commutator degree uh, of a polynomial, right? For that, we consider this chain of the ideals. But if I change this chain of the ideals to other important chain of the ideals, let's say the the ideals generated by standard polynomials. So, we know that standard polynomials are important in studying uh, identities of matrices. So is it possible to characterize the, I am saying that a polynomial has st degree k here, okay? If it lies in here and it's not here. Is it possible to characterize in terms of its coefficients, the polynomials of st degree k? I believe this would be an interesting uh, problem to solve. I don't know how hard is this, I haven't tried. <laughs> But I believe it would be really interesting because it should, it should uh, shed some light on the problem of studying identities of matrices of order higher than two. That we don't know the, for example, for two by two matrices, we don't know a set of finite set of polynomial identities who generate all identities. So I believe this is interesting too. And just to mention other variations we are working now, this I am working with. Lucio Centroni, we are working with uh, graded polynomials. So in a similar way, you can define a, the image of a graded polynomial and you can ask if it's a vector subspace, okay? And we have some partial results for uh, matrices with uh, the canonical grading of the cyclic group of order N. It, it's a preprint, it will be submitted to publication soon. Uh, and also other variations, for example, uh, polynomials with uh, involution on algebra with involution and so on. So the sky is the limit here. <laughs> I believe there is there are many interesting problems to, to study here, okay? So that's what I wanted to talk. And thank you very much for your attention. Okay. We thank you very much for your interesting talk. I am sorry that I was a little bit late because I had a meeting and with Ivan okay. Chukla, we are here from the meeting. You can Hello? support us. <laughs> Do you have any questions or comments? You can simply speak if you have any questions or comments.
And what do you think about the, the Bewolf Kaplansky conjecture? Is this true or not? <laughs> I believe it is, but it's just a, a faith. <laughs> I don't have any anything else to to base my my idea. It's just a it's just a question of faith now. I believe it's true. Some other questions. If no questions, uh, we have a time simply for chat sometime. But I want to make the, um, the announcement for the next talk. The next talk will be um, in two weeks because the next Friday, this is a holiday in Bulgaria. This is, uh, uh, and so we have no talk. And the talk will be uh, um, at 1 p.m. Bulgarian time, not 4 p.m. as now. And it will be on the, um, um, modular isomorphism problem. So you know this famous problem that if you have two P groups and you consider the group algebras of a characteristic P, is this true that the, the, if the group algebras are isomorphic, are the groups isomorphic? And it turns out that in characteristic two, the answer is no. And you see why it's no. There will be a talk of, um, you, um, you receive the official information with abstract, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Thank you once again for the talk. Thank you. Okay, so I will stop recording now, and you can continue uh, having a chat, informal chat uh, in in your native languages. Okay.